The way that gives that natural look is T O N I, Tony. Tony. Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, brings you Crime Photographer. Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Cullen greeting you for Tony Home Permanent and inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Holiday. Thanksgiving Day, early afternoon. Among the crowd that strolls idly by the Blue Note Cafe is a slight, worried-looking man who, unlike the other strollers, doesn't appear to be in a holiday mood. Uh, Biff! Biff Connors! Huh? Hey, you remember me, fella? Casey, Morning Express. Sure, I remember you. Hey, Casey. Couldn't be better. Biff, I haven't seen you since... Gosh, it must be three years. So. Yeah, closer to four. I guess it is. Miss Williams, let me introduce Mr. Connors. Hello, Mr. Connors. Nice to meet you, Miss Williams. I heard some nice things about you, Biff. They tell me you're married now, raising a family, got your own business, doing fine. Yeah, well, uh, I gotta be running along. It's nice huh? seeing you, Casey. Been introduced to you, Miss Williams. So long. Well, so long, Biff. <laughs> that was short and sweet. Your friend could hardly contain his joy at meeting you. Yeah. You look worried, Casey. I don't think his mind is really on you. Who is he? Well, he... Used to be one of the cleverest safe crackers in the country. Safe cracker? Hmm. He knew more about safes than the people that make them. Well, he didn't keep him out of jail, though. He served three stretches. You don't usually introduce me to your criminal associates. Uh, Biff wasn't the usual kind of criminal, Annie. Since his last term in the big house, he's going absolutely straight, too. I know that. Yeah, I hope nothing's gone wrong with the guy. Oh, yeah. probably not. Ah, here's the blue note. Mm, let me push open the door for you. Thank you. Well, look who's here. Hi, pal. Good Hi. afternoon, Ethelbert. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. And to you. In big red letters. Had your turkey and trimmings yet? No, uh, we plan to go to a movie and then have dinner about 7 o'clock. You having it here? What? Thanksgiving dinner in this joint? Oh, not a chance. What's the matter with this joint? The chef's putting out a $1.75 special today. Casey's that taking me to the Ritz for dinner. And then we're going to a play. Yep. Movies in the afternoon, the Ritz for dinner, and then an evening show, huh? Mm -hmm. You are having a holiday. <laughs> uh -huh. We're not going to waste any of it hanging around here as much as we love you, Ethelbert. Oh. Casey, mm -hmm. it just came to my mind. As of November 1st, you owe us on your October bill. Oh, well, that's all right, Ethelbert. Just carry it over to December. <laughs> I'm going to need all the dough I've got on me today, I think. Yeah, and you'll need all you got on you in December. I don't like the done a pal, Casey, but I know Casey. you... Huh? Oh, hello, Biff. Mr. Excuse Connors. me for butting in like this, Miss Williams, but Casey, after I left you outside, I, uh, I got to think... Oh, well, we're I... glad to see you again, fella. How about having... No, you... no, no, thanks. Uh, I hope you'll excuse me, Miss Williams. Casey, if I ain't asking too much, well, will you step outside with me while... So I, I can talk to you along? Well, I... Uh... I'd appreciate it, Casey, a lot. Sure, go ahead, Casey. I'll, uh, wait for you here. Oh. Well? Okay, any thanks. Okay, Biff. Thanks a million. You look awful worried, fella. What's this all about? Are you a busy professional woman, a teacher, a nurse, perhaps a business career girl? Well, Tony Home Permanent is a blessing for busy women like you. It takes so little time to give yourself the most natural-looking wave you've ever had with Tony. You don't have to spend half a day away from home. You don't have to sit under a hot dryer. While your Tony wave is taking, you can listen to the radio, read, do anything you like. This weekend, get the Tony kit complete with plastic curlers for just $2. Follow the simple directions and see how convenient it is to give yourself the loveliest wave you've ever had with Tony Home Permanent. The wave that gives that natural look. T-O-N-I, Tony. Turn into the side street, Casey. It ain't so crowded. We can talk. Okay, Bert. I, uh... I wouldn't wish this on you, Casey. You ain't a guy who owes me anything. But after I ran into you by accident a while ago, I got to thinking that maybe it was one of them... 
them signs. You see, I've been praying. Yeah. Well, there. You was always a regular in my book, and I got to think that maybe you was the one guy in the world I could turn to for help. Yeah, well, uh, what kind of help do you need? I'm not so heavy with dough. I have plans for today, but if you've got no, to have... No, I don't want any money. Oh. Well, you're not in trouble, then. Uh, wait a minute. You in wrong with the cops again? Not yet. Not yet? Casey, I've been 100% straight since I came out of stir last time. I asked you to believe that. I believe you, Ben. I, the wife, and I built up a nice little business. We got a, we got a store uptown, tobacco, candy, toys, stationery. Things were going along just swell until two weeks ago. What happened then? A couple of guys come into my store with a proposition. They wanted me to crack a safe. Yeah. They offered me 5,000 bucks to do the job. Nice money. I told them where to go with it. A couple of days later, they come back. They raised their offer to 10 grand. I threw him out of the place. Gone. Well, that didn't get me nothing. He told me I'd play along with him or else. And then this morning I found a loaded 45 caliber automatic under my candy counter. What, a gun? Yeah. I'm an ex-con, Casey, a three-time loser. You know what it'd mean for me if the cops found a gat in my possession? You'd get the book. Sure, I'd be put away for keeps. The gun was planted under that counter, Casey, sometime during the night. I wrapped it up. I made an excuse to the wife that I had to come downtown, and I went to the North Bridge, and I dropped it in the river. This gun was left where you'd be sure to find it. Yeah. It wasn't meant as a frame, just a, as a hint of what'll happen if I don't play ball. Have well, the two guys been around to follow up their hint? I don't know. I ain't been back to the store. Oh. Since I left the bridge, I've just been walking around, trying to think. My wife don't know anything about them guys in the proposition. I ain't told her. And I can't tell her. She knows all about my record. You can figure how scared you'd be. And you haven't told the cops? Does a guy like me ever run to the cop? Well, it'd be smart if you ran to him this no, time. No, no, no. Why not? In the first place, they wouldn't believe me. An ex-con. They figure I was trying to put something over. I can't blame him, Casey. Well, I can tell him. You've got to promise me you won't. Well, Biff, Listen. Why? Suppose they did believe me. What happens? They set a trap for the guys who propositioned me. Them guys got friends who'll know that the squeal that the cops acted on had to come from me. My life wouldn't be worth a nickel. Yeah, guess you got something Promise there. me you won't say nothing to the cops, Casey. You got it. Well, what do you want me to do, Biff? I don't know. I just had to talk to somebody, that's all. For a guy I knew was right, and... I ain't got such a good head, Casey. I figured maybe... Maybe you could figure my way out. Well, thanks for the compliment. Well, who are the guys that came to you with this proposition? I don't know. They didn't tell me their names. Well, I get around a little. What do they look like? One was, uh, uh tall and skinny... Had a long face and big yellow teeth. He kind of looks like a horse. Yeah? And the other's a little dark guy, heavy set. Oh, wait a minute. The one you say looks like a horse, has he got a long scar on his neck? Yeah, like somebody done a shift job on it. Can't be two mugs who answer to that description. Scar neck, horse face must be Jake Bannister. Head strong arm goon for Nick Reynolds. Nick Reynolds? Well, you must know who he is. Well, the name's familiar, but... Hey, you are out of touch with the rackets, kid. Nick Reynolds is the Mr. Big behind some of the dirtiest crooked work that goes on in this town. But he poses as a solid, respectable business guy, and the cops have never been able to nail him. Oh, wait a minute. Tell me more about the little uh, heavy set mug. Well, he, uh, he looks... He's got a cauliflower ear like a pug, and he stinks of perfume. Be Tony Chef. He's another of Reynolds' guys. This is beginning to sound like hot stuff. I don't suppose they told you whose safe they want open, huh? No. They tell you anything about it? Only that it was a small house safe, a real tough one. That's what he needed, an old hot shot like me. And they offered you dough to crack it, ten grand. They didn't say anything about giving you a share of what's in it. That's right. I got a notion there isn't any dough in the box to share, Casey. Just something that somebody wants and is willing to pay high for. Uh, think you can find out from those guys where the box is, the location of the house, and who lives there? Well, they won't tell me unless I say I'll play ball with them. Oh. Uh, no, that's right, they won't. Look, Biff, go back to your store. They ought to be paying you a visit there today after planting that gun. Try to learn all you can. And then... Well, I made other plans for this afternoon, but I'll I'll stick around the blue note. I'll write down the number of a phone booth there so we can talk in private when you call. There. Here it is. Thanks, Casey. I got a dinner date for around seven that I can't break, fella, and then I'll be tied up for the rest of the evening, so if your guys don't show by seven, well, things are going to have to just ride a while, I guess. But in the meantime, I'll... Be running down a little tip I got on Nick Reynolds. A tip? Yeah, it's just a piece of gossip I didn't think much of until I heard your story. Now it may mean something. 
Mm. Well, so long, Biff. Take it easy now and try not to worry, huh? Yeah, I'll try, but you remember you promised me, Casey. You won't tell the cops. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I won't tell the cops. <laughs> And because your ex-convict friend is so worried, Casey, you leave me sitting here in the blue note for most of the afternoon. Well, I, I, I phoned you. I'd be a little delayed, Yeah, Annie. a little delayed. Look at the time. It's nearly 5 o'clock. You were taking me to the movies this afternoon. Remember? Oh, please, kid. What's a movie when a guy's in a jam? Well, yeah, the poor fellow is in a bad spot. Yeah, he's in a terrible spot from what Casey's told us, Miss Williams. And I don't see what can be done about it without help from the cops. Listen, if they're brought into the picture, Ethelbert... Biff would be killed for squealing. Nick Reynolds is behind this thing, and he plays rough. Casey, you said you'd been following up a tip on Reynolds? Yeah. What? You know Monty Summers, Annie? Or the Summers Detective Agency? Yeah, Summers Blackmail Bureau would be a better name for his outfit. Yeah, that's right. Well, Summers is a shakedown artist of the dirtiest kind. He's done a lot of work for Nick Reynolds, but he doesn't work for him anymore. There's been a bust-up. Yeah, I heard that. Well, my tip was that Summers pulled the old double cross and collected evidence against his boss, Reynolds, enough to send him away for life. Now, Reynolds is supposed to be paying him plenty to keep that evidence under his hat. Well, that tip sounds like a phony. Reynolds wouldn't pay a blackmailer. He'd have him bumped off. Well, sure, like you just said, Casey, Nick Reynolds plays rough. Yeah, but he's too smart to play rough when he stands to lose by it, though. If Summers has the goods on Reynolds, it's in documentary form. It won't be destroyed by his death. It's a sense that Summers has convinced his old boss that the stuff will be made public if he's killed or if he disappears. Yeah, that's so. But, Casey, what's it got to do with your friend Biff Connors? Ethelbert, two of Nick Reynolds' trusted hoods offer Biff a flat sum, not a share, to open a house safe. You mean... Well, it could be Monty Summers' documentary evidence that Reynolds wants. I see. And if it is... Sure. And we could get it, Casey. Oh, what a story. Mm -hmm, what a story. With exclusive pictures, too. It'd be worth missing an afternoon movie for, wouldn't it, kid? <laughs> I'll say. And if the evidence got Nick Reynolds sent to jail, this town would be a much better place to live in. But how is this theory of yours going to help Biff Connors, Casey? Mm, it doesn't. It's a complication. Well, since Biff hasn't phoned, I guess Reynolds' mugs didn't show up at his place. He's probably taking a holiday off. No, I'd like a little holiday myself. And away from this place. I'm hungry, Casey. Let's start for the Ritz. Well, it's uh, not nearly 7 o'clock yet, Annie. I told the guy... If he I... phones, I'll tell him you've gone to the Ritz, Casey, and a call. Oh, him. no, Ethelbert. I'm not going to have my Thanksgiving dinner spoiled by phone calls for Casey. Well, you're so anxious to get out of the good old blue note, Miss Williams. I thought... Well, you that... think again. After we leave here, you tell nobody where to reach us. We're going to have the rest of this day to ourselves. Yeah, you, you do as Miss Williams says, pal. Really, nothing I can do for Biff tonight, and... He's going to stall those guys anyway. Whatever you say, Casey. Yeah. Well, come on, Annie. <laughs> At last, we're going places. Right. So long, Ethelbert. So long. Oh, Mr. Casey. Uh, yes, Walter. Uh, phone call for you in the booth. Uh, Mr. Connors. Uh-oh. No. Oh. No. No. Excuse me, Annie. I might have known, Ethelbert. I might have known. Hello. Casey speaking. This is Biff. Biff Connors. Anything happen? Plenty. Some guys were here and I couldn't stall them like you told me, Casey. Couldn't stall them? No, they said they'd get my wife and kid if I didn't fall in line. They weren't bluffing. I gotta do their job tonight at 12 or else. 12 tonight? Yeah, I promised them I will and I have to. There's no way you or anybody else can help me now, pal. I just phoned because I said I would and you wouldn't be kept hanging around until 7 o'clock. That's all. So long. Hey, wait a minute. Don't hang up. There's no use talking, Listen, Casey. Biff, Biff. After you promised those guys that you'd do their job, did they tell you where it's gonna be? Yeah. You know what you promised me, Casey. Yeah. No cops. You've got to trust me, fella. Now, give me that address, will you? Okay. It's on Riker Avenue, number 390. 390 Riker. That's right. Hmm. Those two guys will go there with you at 12 tonight? Yeah, and they'll be watching me every minute, Casey, with guns in their mitts. Well, listen. Stay in your store. I'll get in touch with you there by 1030. You got some plan, Casey? You think there's a chance? There's a swell chance, Biff. There's every chance. Now, stop worrying, kid. You'll hear from me in a couple of hours. So long. I got faith in you, Casey. So long. Mm, faith in a liar. I can't figure any chance. Annie! Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't tell me. We're not heading for the Ritz and turkey dinner. No. We're going out to look over Monty Summers' house right now. Oh, you mean Monty Summers, the black man? I looked up his address this afternoon just in case. 
He lives at 390 Riker Avenue. Come on, Annie, let's go. Yeah, so long, Ethelbert. So long. <laughs> no Thanksgiving dinner for you two. <laughs> house we go so a horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the something or other hi other bird say wasn't that uh casey and miss williams just leaving the blue note oh, there hello mr cullen yeah that was them oh well, they didn't speak to me well they was going so fast they must not have seen you <laughs> yeah uh why the speed well they're trying to stop a safe cracker from cracking a safe he don't want to crack I uh, don't quite follow you, Ethelbert, but I gather that crime does not take a holiday? No. Hmm. And, and, and Casey figured it would. He'd promised Miss Williams turkey and trimmings at the Ritz. That's where he made his mistake. Mistake? Why, well, I'd call that a pretty sound idea for Thanksgiving Day. Making a promise to a woman? Mm hmm. Mr. Cullen, that's always a mistake. Oh, no, Ethelbert. Tony made a promise to millions of women, and it's been a great thing for everybody. You see, not many years ago, no one ever dreamed women could give themselves satisfactory permanence right at home. But Tony developed a gentle, cream-cold wave that they knew would give wonderful results with all types of hair. So they made a promise and backed it up with a guarantee. They said, Tony will give you a permanent that lasts just as long as a $15 beauty shop wave and is guaranteed to look more natural or your money back. And women were interested. They tried Tony and the promise came true. They found they can give themselves waves and curls with Tony that are so soft and shiny they look like naturally curly hair. So they told their friends and what's happened. Are you asking me, or is that a reader or oracle question? <laughs> I, I guess everybody knows the answer, Ethelbert. Now, more than a million women each month use Tony Home Permanent. More than a million? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of women. Yes, each month, another million women give themselves lovely Tony waves. <laughs> a big house, Annie. Monty Summers lives well. Oh, now that we're uh, looking at it, Casey, what are you going to do? Annie, we've got to think as though we plan to crack a safe here ourselves. <laughs> the easiest to go in and out from the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I think I'd come here in a car and park it under one of these trees. Not directly in front of the house, of course, but close enough for a quick getaway. And leave a lookout in it? No, 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 I wouldn't do that. A guy sitting in a parked car might attract attention, which I don't want. I'd post a lookout, but he won't be in the car or even near it most of the time. Mm -hmm. Well, now that that's decided, what do we do? <laughs> I don't know, kid. He's trying to make us think that. Huh? I'm pretty sure that Nick Reynolds will come here himself with Biff and those rod men tonight. Mm -hmm. He'd trust nobody but himself to take that evidence out of the safe. You want it in his own hands to take it away and examine it, destroy it. Well, if there's a chance of getting him, we've got to get the cops in on this. But they catch Biff opening the safe. In spite of everything that we could say in a guy's favor, the law says that fourth offenders go up for life. And oh, we've got to catch Reynolds with the goods and at the same time keep Biff out of it. Mm, it's a large order. Sure is. I'm afraid it's too large, kid. I can't see any way to fill it. Casey, if you and I came back here at midnight and hid ourselves, when Reynolds and Biff Connors and the others come out, we can cover them with a couple of guns. We'll capture Reynolds and his gang and let Biff Connors get away. <laughs> Annie, can you really picture you and me in a gangster movie act like that? We'd only get ourselves shot. No, I guess we're not the right type. Why aren't we like some of the characters we see in the movies? They solve everything so easily by just drawing their trusty automatics and going bang, bang, bang. Hmm, wish we were. What am I, a woman or a mouse? In that western we saw last week, a gal my size captured a dozen tough cattle rustlers all by herself. <laughs> well, her boyfriend was pretty good, too, don't forget. <laughs> Tall, dark, and handsome in the fancy pants. He was certainly a shock with a lariat, mm. too. He lassoed the character who tried to steal Grandpappy's beef ranch. He yanked <laughs> him off his pinto pony so hard I kind of got aching bones myself. <laughs> it's so easy in the movies. Mm. Oh, well. This line of thinking isn't getting us anywhere. No, I'm afraid. Wait a minute. Maybe it is. Huh? Lasso. Man. Horse. Casey, what are you... I've got an idea, Annie. You have? Yeah, come on. Get in the car. Tell you about it. We're on our way to borrow something that I'll need. Then I'll get to Biff Connor and tell him honestly that he has a swell chance. I really.
really got a chance, Casey? That you have every chance. Tell me. No, not yet. You tell me about the setup for tonight, as you got it from Reynolds Rodman. Go on to meet him a couple of blocks from here, see, at 11 o'clock, yeah. like I told yeah, you. that's right. They'll be in a black sedan. They'll have the tools they'll need for the safe job. Mm-hmm. Then we drive right out to the Riker Avenue house. They say the guy who owns the joint won't be there. That's why the job's got to be done tonight. It's only a servant in the house. And he's been fixed. Well, they don't look for any trouble then, huh? No, they claim it'll be a set. Mm, they do for a surprise. You're the only one who's not headed for trouble. Casey, tell me uh, what... No, it... no. The less you know about this whole thing, the better for you. But I want you to be sure to do three things, Biff. Yeah? First, after you open the safe, don't let any of the guys with you destroy anything they take out of it. Act scared. Insist on getting out of the house right away. Okay. All right. Now, second, when you reach the getaway car, get into the back seat. Back seat? Yeah. Third, take a grip on the front seat and brace yourself. Brace yourself with all the muscle that you've got. house over an hour, Casey. Yeah. Well, summer safe must be really tough. Reynolds had to get an expert like Biff for this job. You're sure it was Nick Reynolds that we saw go into the house? Yes, dead sure. He went in with Biff and horse face. Yeah. And Reynolds' presence here, Annie, means that we guessed right about his deep personal interest in that safe. Casey, that explosion. Yes, from inside the house, it means Biff has had to blow the safe. Well, then it's open now and he'll soon be coming out. That's right. You're, you're, you're certain the uh, lookout didn't see what you did a while ago. No, no, of course he didn't. He was at the end of the block across the street when I was working in the dark. Oh, well, I hope the work you did works. Let's trust old cowboy Casey and... Quiet, quiet. <gasps> Keep back in these shadows. They're coming from the house now. And fast. Reynolds is carrying a briefcase. I see it. The lookout set himself in the car. He's going to drive. Start the motor. As soon as the others get in, I'll help him make a good fast getaway. Well, if he doesn't start that car fast... Leave that to me. The others are in the car now. Reynolds has taken the front seat beside the driver. That's perfect. Now they're all in. It's time for me to impersonate a cop. Here goes. Hey, you fellas in that car! You made the driver step on the gas, Casey. Can't hard. It won't be long now. <laughs> that kid it! Yeah, work, Casey. The scheme worked. Couldn't fail. Come on, we've got to get Biff out of there. Yeah. Hope he braced himself. Yeah, well, if he didn't... Oh, look, a man's crawling from under That's the car. Okay, fellas, it's me. You know what happened to the car? There was nothing in front of us. There's nothing there now. Suddenly the thing stopped like we hit a stone wall. I see your three playmates went half through the windshield. Yeah, they're out cold. Casey, what? Never mind. You haven't got time to ask any questions now. Around that corner, you'll find a black Ford coupe. Here's the key. Get in, drive home quick as you can. And if anybody ever asks you, say you've never been near Riker Avenue. Come on, Biff, get going quick. Okay, pal, whatever you say. But I'd sure like to know what happened to that car. Let's see what the sleeping Mr. Reynolds has in his briefcase. Yeah, I want to see. Hmm. A lot of letters, canceled checks, photographs. All incriminating, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Now, Annie, we'll call the cops. And then, Casey, you think a gal may safely hope for uh, a bite of dinner? <laughs> Soft water shampooing, use Tony Cream Shampoo. Even in the hardest water, Tony Cream Shampoo. Yes, even in the hardest water, Tony Cream Shampoo gives soft water shampooing that rinses away dandruff instantly, leaves hair so soft, so smooth, so shining clean. Today, bring out the sparkling beauty of your hair with soft water shampooing. Get the handy tube or jar of Tony Cream Shampoo. It's new. I'm terribly sorry we can't get you and Casey nothing better out of the kitchen than this cold turkey, Miss Williams. But, uh, of course, the cooks left hours ago. And oh, I just love cold turkey, Ethelbert. And at this hour of the morning. So much nicer than the dinner I expected to have at the Ritz. Yeah, well, I'm awful sorry, Annie. I, I certainly gummed up your day, didn't I? <laughs> Don't you ever know when I'm kidding, Casey. I've had a swell day. A real day for Thanksgiving, because we accomplished something worthwhile. Your pal, huh. Say, you ain't told me yet how you made that car stop like it had hit a stone wall. Hmm. 
You've seen a lot of Wild West movies, Ethelbert. Sure. Well, then you've seen men pulled off running horses with uh, lassos. Lots of times. The horse always kept on running. Yeah. Well, now imagine the horse was lassoed, not the rider. The horse had stopped dead. And his rider would keep on going over its head. Well, that's what happened to the crook's getaway car. You lassoed that car, Casey? <laughs> Well, it amounted to that. Casey brought a very strong 150-foot steel cable out there, Ethelbert. Yeah, with a hook at both ends. Yeah, in the darkness, he hooked one end of his cable to the axle of that car and the other end to a big tree. And I made a noise like a cop to startle the driver into a good, fast start. And when the cable paid out to its limit... Oh, I get it. Yeah, and, and the only reason Biff Connors wasn't knocked through the windshield like the others was because he braced himself like you told him. That's right. Even he was a little dazed when he climbed out, though. Oh, well. Anyway, Reynolds and his mob are all washed up, thanks to the stuff in that briefcase. They can't hurt Viv Connors or anyone else. Hmm. You two had quite a holiday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a grand one. Uh, oh, um, have some more cold turkey, Casey? Uh, yeah, I think I will, Annie. <laughs> And it didn't cost you anything. You saved money by not going to the movies, to the Ritz for dinner, and to a play after. Well, sure, that's right. Yeah. You can't need all the dough you got on you. Of course not. Huh? I hate to dun a friend, Casey, but there's a little matter of that long overdue October bill, and... <laughs> You've got you, Casey. I'm dead to right. Oh. If this isn't an ending for a grand day. Here I've been roped in myself. Well... As my sister Edna says, quote, If you give a calf enough rope, he can't be led to wool. No, no, uh, you, you can lead a calf before he crosses... I'll be darned if I don't forget it. <laughs> uh, unquote. <laughs> well, all right, pal, after that. Here's what I owe you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, Happy Thanksgiving, Ethelbert. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to all. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is directed by John Dietz. It's written by Alonzo Dean Cole and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne, and John Gibson as Ethelbert, Herman Chittison as the Blue Note pianist. This is Bill Cullen asking you to listen again next week at this same time to another exciting adventure of crime photographer, and also inviting you to listen to This is Nora Drake, radio's thrilling serial romance, heard every Monday through Friday, 2.30 p.m. New York time, over most of these stations. Both of these programs brought to you each week by Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, and the new Tony Cream Shampoo for soft water shampooing even in the hardest water. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System.